Well, good evening, everybody. It's good to be here and blessed to be here, enjoy the time together. I hope what I bring to you tonight will help at least put a little bit of a fire in you and maybe the Lord will bless it. I hope so. I bless, I hope he will. Um, I don't have any particular scripture. I'm just going to let the Lord bring the scripture out to me. Um, I wrote down a couple of things on my paper here. I should be excited. I'm talking about me as a person. I should be excited, but I need to be excited about the fact that I know the future. My Bible tells me to know the future. Now, I don't know tomorrow. I don't know the next day. I don't know when the Lord is coming. But I believe that we should all have the desire to be excited. That is, if you know the Lord, and the Lord is in you, and He abides in you, and He lives in you, then you should be excited. I should be excited excited about what God has in store very, very soon. I don't want to sound like a broke record, but I believe if the Lord allows the election to go the way it's heading, I believe honestly that this ain't nothing but signs of the times. I really believe that. Um... I believe we're we're at the doorway. I, I I I personally do not believe that God is going to ignore the betterment of the people that voted for character and for Christian values and for life. I'm talking about life in the womb. Um. I don't want to make this political. I'm not trying to make it political, but I'm excited to know that God is ramping up his time when he returns. I believe that it's down to game point match. I believe it's getting down to the end of the fourth quarter with maybe a play or two to run before he returns. That's just how near. That's the reason I feel like I am excited. I'm excited to know my future. There's a lot of people that have no clue about the future. They have absolutely no clue of what's going to happen tomorrow if the Lord decides to return tomorrow the next day, there's people that are going to be caught totally, totally off guard. I should be excited. I should be anticipating. I anticipate. I came out here tonight after writing this stuff down earlier today I came out here with an anticipation that I am anticipating his return. Now, I talk about this all the time. So if you hear and you heard it before, just give me a minute to see if I can bring up some other words that might give you some information. I'm anticipating his return. I don't, I don't say I'm sorry for that. I believe we're at the door, literally. 
I really do believe that. I believe we're at the door. The reason that I know my future is I'm looking forward to that future. There, is there things I that I enjoy down here on earth? Yes, sure. But I'm anticipating that future. I'm looking forward to that future. I don't know how many people understand what I'm trying to say, but I'm expecting that future. I look forward to being raptured away from here. That's the reason I ain't worried about really the election because really and truly, Mr. Trump was just a man. He was just a man. And I believe that the truth is just like the Bible says, the truth will set you free. You know, if our truth sets us free when we make it to heaven, that's the ultimate truth of all. That is the ultimate truth is when we get to that place that is called heaven. Not only am I looking forward to it, I'm expecting it. Just like when I make a package and I order something from UPS, I expect that package to come. When I order my meds, they have been real good about in about two days from Arizona. I get my medicine. Man, I'll tell you what, I am very impressed with the people that I get my medicine from because, I mean, it's like I order and two days later, uh, there's no dragging around. That thing is there. I mean, it is. It's. I'm expecting the coming of the Lord just like that. But, you know, right now, people have to get prepared for that future. I feel like that because of what the Lord did in me back in 2007, the Lord allowed me to be prepared for that day. That preparation of that being prepared is a beautiful thing. It really is a beautiful thing. Yes, it brings peace. It brings joy. Uh, it's my meditation. I meditate on it all the time. I think about the meditation of how it's going to be and just the unknown and the things that are unknown. I meditate on the future of how that future is going to be. I should be meditating on that change. I should be thinking about it. What's wrong with thinking about something? If a, if a boyfriend loves a girlfriend and the girlfriend and the boyfriend wants to get married, what's wrong with the boyfriend anticipating the love of his female, or vice versa. What's wrong with the female anticipating her love for her male partner? Isn't that a wonderful thing? See, I can be thinking of my future. That is, if I know my future, what's it going to be like? I think about that all the time. I have no clue of what it's going to be like. Now, the Bible tells us a lot of places that it's a mystery. But what is it going to be like? What is the throne going to be like? I can only just imagine in my mind what the throne of God is going to consist of. I can only just picture it in my mind, but yet the mind, our eyes have not seen nor ears heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things that God hath prepared for them that love him. 
See, I can think about the throne. And there's times that I do think about the throne. You know, another thing I think about, too, is what is his words to me? What's the Lord going to say to me? Now, you know what? That really ought to throw a knot in every one of us. What is the Lord going to say to me? So if I can ask myself that question, why can't I also ask that question to people that are listening tonight? What's the Lord going to say to you? Some people is not going to be ready. People that are saved, some people is going to feel ashamed because they didn't do nothing with what they had. Some people it has anticipation. All them things that I just called out. You know, I've always been a people person. And there's people in the nursing home that I have known that has been dead and gone now. And sad to say, when I go back, if I'm ever given the opportunity to go back into the nursing home, there's going to be some that won't be there. And I think about that. I think about the fact that there's going to be some that is moved on with life because they passed away. And all I can do is pray that they knew the Lord Jesus, that the messages that they heard was a message from the Lord Jesus. I hope that there was something that I said, something that I'd done, that when I get to that place that is called heaven, I'm going to recognize people, the people that I remember that was in the nursing home. I believe that's the way heaven is going to be. We're going to be able to remember people. Now, how that's done, I don't know. I believe it's going to be a place of peace. So how in the world can I think about this world when my mind is on the place of peace or the place of joy? How in the world can I maintain my composure when I'm thinking on my joy that I'm going to receive when I get there? Just something to think about. I think about eternity. Imagine a place that will never end. Just try to let that go over in your head. Try to ponder on that one. Just, just sort of think about that. Meditate on that. Let me ask you a question. Do you know your future? You know, sad to say, many people don't know. They don't know the future because they don't have salvation. And sad to say, most people, I hate to say it, but most people really don't care. They don't care. They don't know it. They don't realize that they're going to stand before a holy God one day. They're going to, they're going to give an account to God for their actions that they have done in this life. And that's true. We're going to give an account for the actions of who we voted for, who we supported. You know what? All that is going to come back to haunt some people. Because I look at it this way. Little baby's blood is not on my hands. Because I made a stand that I voted for life. I voted for life of the baby in the womb. And I will not regret that. If it costs me friends or subscribers, I don't really care. I'm not over the ones who looks at the video anyway. 
but I'm not going to vote for no baby killers. I'm just not going to do it. Call me judgmental, whatever you want to call me, but I'm not going to vote. I'm not going to throw away my vote. At least my wife's vote and my vote canceled out two of the votes. Whoever's two, it canceled out. We canceled out two of them. Might not make no difference, but it makes a difference to God, though. Do you know your future? A lot of people don't. A lot of people hope that they're good. They hope that they are living a good life, and they think that God is just going to give them a free pass. Let me tell you something right now. God doesn't give free passes because he's already given the plan of salvation. He's done given that to every man. It's up to man to accept that free gift of salvation. God's all, already done all the work. It's just a matter of us accepting that free gift of salvation. That's a decision that you make, and it's a decision that I make. I make the decision to believe in Christ, or I make a decision to reject Christ. I made a decision to vote for the red. I did not make the decision to vote for the blue. That's just me. I only control one vote. If I'm asking you a question, do you know your future? The other question would have to be, is there any question? You know what? If you're unsure about your future, then you automatically have questions about your future. That's an automatic. That's just a give me. That if you are unsure about your future, then you have questions about that future. And I believe I'm talking to somebody today, and I don't know who it is, but I'm talking to somebody. If you are not sure about your future, then you have questions about that future. And the last question that I'll ask, and I asked it up there just a minute ago, are you prepared? If Jesus was to come back tonight, are you prepared if he comes back tonight? He's going to know whether you're saved or not. He's going to know whether you're born again or not. He's going to know all about your decision that you made to love him and to believe in him and honor him. He's going to know because he knows all things. There's nothing going to get past the creator God of the universe. Not even an election is going to get past him. So, yes, I'm grateful and I'm plumb happy and plum content that I've spent $12, I think it was, to buy a Trump sign for my flagpole. And you know what? It's still up by my flagpole. I'm still proud of the fact of the things that he has accomplished for, for his duty from 2016 to 2020. But I was thinking about it today, and let me say this very quickly. He's still got 20 days in November. He's still got 31 days in December, and he's got till the 20th of January. And ladies and gentlemen, there can be a lot of things happen in that shorter window. And I believe we could actually see the coming of the Lord. I believe that with all my heart. I wouldn't come out here and say it if I didn't believe it. Are you excited? That's the question you need to ask yourself. Elderlyministry.com is the website. 
there you'll find a phone number. Pull it down and you'll see the phone number. You're welcome to call anytime. Just leave a message. Leave a message. And I'll be more than glad to give you a call back. But I need to know when you call so I can get your message. Thank you for watching tonight. I appreciate it.